Hi, this is Cherie with Rehash Fiber. Today I want to tell you about a very useful tool that I enjoy using a lot. The Ashford Rigid Heddle Loom. This for me, it is a great way to rather quickly create awesome scarves, wraps, I think even with this as wide as it is, a lap blanket. I really enjoy using the Rigid Huddle Loom because I have mentioned before, I'm an addicted spinner. So I enjoy spinning every day and I end up with tons of yarn like this. All varieties, all colors, uh, lots to do that I feel I need to get used up. This is my helpful tool for that. So what I like to do is plan my project, whether it's small, like this little wrap, or maybe a very large poncho, and mix and match colors that I would like to use with it. The Rigid Head Loom comes in four sizes. I chose this one because I wanted 32 inches so that it would be big enough that I could make big things if I wanted but I can also go smaller. So I could knit a very narrow scarf on this if I wanted, but I can also have the room to go big. That is the plus of it. The downsize is that it is a very big tool to store. So if you have tight quarters, that's kind of hard to do. Also, you can't transport it very easy. If you're a person on the go and want to take your weaving with you, then you'd be better off with a smaller loom. You will know what works for you. I, so far, have only needed two reeds. These are called reeds or heddles. I have the 7.5 dents per inch, so they call them 7.5 DPI. That means there are that many per inch. Then I have the bigger one, because I spin very thick yarn. These two so far have really worked well for me. I am thinking about going smaller so I could do a little bit finer weaving, but so far these work really great. When you order the loom, it comes unfinished. That way you can finish it to whatever shade you like, or you can leave it unfinished. You may have heard in a previous show how I was discussing why do these items come unfinished and how I learned that if each company spent that much time and money to finish them, the product would cost more. So we get it the way we get it unfinished. It's okay. When I received the Rigid Heddle Loom, these are the supplies that came with it. I got a clamp and the warping peg. This hooks onto the table so you can warp your thread around it. They're two separate items, by the way. I just keep them together. The threading hook. Shuttles. And the reed. These cardboard warp sticks also come with it. Also, this instruction guide which is completely sufficient. I had been shown briefly and quickly how to weave at the yarn shop. Then when I ordered the loom, I went through this instruction book and it was perfect. Step by step, I was weaving. If you have the option of buying the Ashford Rigid Heddle weaving book, I recommend it. It's got a lot of different instructions in there on how to do different kinds of weaving techniques. It's really good. The things I also keep in my bag that are my own is a pen and a tablet because when it comes to working with this, I don't wanna to have to run around the house and find these things each time. I want them right there in my bag, my weaving bag. So the pen and the paper, my own weaving tape measure, it's always there. And this is just a cloth, so when I clamp this down on a table or chair, it's not hurting the wood. Just keeping all those things very handy. So to make your first project, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips. You can design it any way you want, 
because the project I make and show you how to do may not be what you want to do. But here are some very basic tips for you. We're gonna use this little wrap as an example. You decide how long you want your scarf or wrap to be. This one is 45 inches long. The warp is the yarn that you put on the loom first that you work on. So you have to warp your loom. You need to take the length of the item that you're working on and add eight inches to each side for tying it off on the loom. So that meant I had to warp 61 inches. So I just measured from where I tie it on 61 inches to my wrapping peg, all right? Then I knew that I wanted it 12 and a half inches wide. Usually people, when they're weaving, pull the thread enough that it kind of shrinks your project. You want to give yourself an additional couple of inches in case you weft a little bit tight. So this is 12 and a half inches wide. I went ahead and planned for 14 and a half inches. Now I'm going to break it all down for you and show you in great detail how you can weave with a rigid heddle loom. I've decided that I want to make a poncho out of all that yarn that I made on that dyeing binge and then spun up. I want to use this yarn for the warp. I want my colors to be vertical. Then I will find a neutral color to do my weft because I want these colors to show up. Okay, here's the part if you want to get technical and you can do it both ways. Figuring out how much yarn you need to do your warp and your weft. I have done it both ways. Sometimes I'm very cavalier. I have just spun up a bunch of yarn and I will just load this up and switch colors and switch colors and switch colors and not worry about how much I have because I just want to use it up and I want a lot of color change. Same with the weft. That is the complete free way to do it, like the free spirit wrap I did a while back. Today, I do care about how much I have and what I need to do with it. And I need to teach you so that you know how to plan. My advice to you is to go to the Woolery online and download their warp and weft calculation worksheet. So if you put this into your search browser, it will bring you to it. And it is a very helpful worksheet. I started to tell you here on this and it got to be too confusing. So I figured it's just best if you download the worksheet and then work it out from there. All right, let's load this loom up. Okay. I measured my 70 inches from the back warp stick to the warping peg. Right here, measured out 70. I put the warping peg at this end of the desk because it's gonna be taking a lot of pull from all the yarn that's gonna be going on to the loom. Also, I always cover it with a light cloth, whatever it's clamped to just because I don't want any damage to whatever it may be, the desk, the chair, table, whatever. All right, so we are gonna start loading our warp with every single reed filled at 70 inches. Starting at the back warp stick, I'm going to extend it, I'm gonna come over the top, and I'm just gonna tie a simple knot to tie on the yarn. Here, the yarn is in a bowl, on the ground so that it will easily be pulled from it. I have my threading hook and I'm gonna stick it right through the first slot. I'm going to hook the yarn where there's the hook and I'm gonna pull it all the way through. This is why I need a large dent because I've got some pretty chunky yarn. I've pulled the yarn through, so it's a like double strand, and I'm taking it all the way over to the warping peg. Try to make sure the warping peg is center to the loom, 
this feels like it's a little bit off. The distance from the warping peg to the back warp stick is that 70 inches. All right, we're gonna do it again. What happens here is now the yarn goes over the back warping end. I hook it again, pull it through the reed, help it through a bit, help it back over the warping peg. Here we go again. I want a little tension on this. I don't want a bunch of droopy yarn and I want it to pull up this. Here we go again. Through the reed. To the warping peg. We do this all the way across. The warping is coming along really good. This can be the tedious part sometimes, but because I'm doing uh, yarn with a lot of color change, it's actually pretty fun. So I want you to be sure that you understand this. The yarn is coming over the back warping stick and with the threading tool, I catch it here and pull it through. Now you see it's underneath. So then I pull it over, take my tool, catch it again, pull it through the reed. So each time yarn is going over and then under. I came to the end of one of the yarn balls. So what I do is I pull this where there's a little bit of tension on it, trim it, and then just simply tie it off with a knot. And then we start the next one, again with just a knot. And then we carry on. All right, the loom is completely full, the reed's full. I'm gonna cut the yarn and just knot it off. There we go. The warp is complete and now it is time to roll up the yarn. I will show you how that's done with one person. What's helpful to have is brown paper that you can get at your local hardware store. Oftentimes I'm by myself and I'm doing this, so I learned how to do this. Here's how you do it on your own. You wanna use the paper because it just helps keep your yarn nice, everything nice. And I start to roll it and move a little closer as I roll it. While you're doing it, just make sure that your yarn is laying nice. It's not bunching up over top of each other, that the tension's staying equal. I'm really enjoying all this color here. That's a lot of fun. Just monitor it the whole way. These rolls of paper I can use over and over again. It's nice. Okay, we're there. Big drum roll. We're gonna take all the yarn off the warping peg. Now, I use my really nice sewing scissors that can handle cutting fabric. It is nice and sharp for fabric. I just cut it right down the middle and I keep a hold on all the yarn. And there we go. Lay it over the loom like so. I'm gonna hold some tension on this yarn here at the end and wrap up just a little bit more. Okay, because now it's gonna be tied around the front warp stick. 
and I don't need excess. Just remember, I have tension on this because I want all of this to be nice and in order. All right, the front warps. I'm gonna leave about that much. On your reed, you have slots and eyes. You need to bring every other strand through the eye. You take your threading hook and put it through the eye and then bring the thread through. Once you've done that, you can tie it off to the front warp stick and this will create your shed when you are moving your reed from the up position to the lower position. So I tied one in the middle at first because I wanted to see the length of the yarn and I can see that the yarn on the ends is just a little bit longer because it had wrapped around the warping peg and had a little more yarn because I try not to waste any yarn so I've got it as short as I can go and still tie it off. So I tied one in the middle then I started from the left and I'm just going to tie these off. Nicely organized, I bring it over and behind, and then I split it, bring that over, and tie like so. And then I go to do a bow, but a half bow. I just bring this all the way through till these are secure. Once you have your loom loaded with all the warp yarn, then you're ready to start weaving. I thought I was ready to go with some of my yarn that I have myself that I hand spun. And it ended up I didn't have enough yardage to do this project and it didn't look right. So thank goodness for my local yarn shop fiber art gallery and Jane, who she is a master weaver. I went in and visited with her, showed her pictures of this, and she helped me find Cascade Yarns Pacific Bulky. And the reason we're going bulky is that I really want this colorful warp to show. So she taught me this, if you have a thicker weft, more of your warp yarns show because if you have thinner you have more strands coming across and it covers it up thicker there's more of a span of space and so you get to see these so if you are doing your project to show off your your warp yarns then keep that in mind so we're going to give it a go another tip she had was set your yarn on it think about it Maybe walk away, come back, maybe even another day. Check it out. Every time that I saw this leaning on it, I liked it. So I'm gonna go for it today. We'll see how it comes out. The first thing you need to do to prepare to weave, you need to put your cardboard warp sticks in. This helps balance out the yarns and get it ready for a good starting point. All right, so your reed is sitting in the back part of the support block. This is the support block right here. The reed sits in the back. That is your neutral position. Less tension, all the yarn is on the same level. Now, when you have it in the up position, you bring it forward to the top part of the reed support block. It raises half of the yarn, right? And it gives you a thing called a shed. This is where your cardboard warp sticks are going to go through to start. So I have it to the top and I'm putting the warp stick through the shed. Make sure it doesn't pick up any yarns from the bottom and then I bring it down nice and close to the bottom where I have all my tied off yarns. Now I'm gonna take the reed and I'm gonna put it to the bottom position of the support block. Now I have some tension on, not super tight, 
but I'm going to go ahead and roll my rollers just a little bit. So now we have the reed at the bottom part of the support block. We're going to put the second cardboard warp stick through, making sure that it's between and you're not accidentally catching any of the yarns from top and mixing top and bottom. You want all the top on the top, bottom on the bottom. You get that through. Sometimes you have yarns that are just a little bit weaker and they dangle. Be careful not to catch those. This comes down. Now, I'm going to end up pushing this down with the reed to get it in a nice place. All right, I want you to see this. So this is what it looks like with your cardboard warp sticks ready to go. Before you can start weaving, you need to load your shuttle. Super easy, but I thought I'd show you anyway. This is complete. You take your shuttle. They sell all different lengths of these. It just depends on how wide your project is. This is wide, I use the biggest one that I have. When I do smaller scarves, I have smaller shuttles so I don't have to deal with this big cumbersome one. All right, just stick it through there, hold it with one finger, and start to wrap. I hate having to stop midway through and wrap, so I put as much on as I can, enough that it's not too cumbersome that it won't get through the shed. I don't have extra shuttles where I guess if some people did, they could just load them all up and be ready to go. That is how you do it, and you just load this till as full as you want it. All right, I'm loaded and ready to go. So excited. This is the fun part. This is where it starts to come together. Taking the reed to the top of the support block. Leave. And see, I have some loose here. I'm leaving out. I'm sending this shuttle through. nice because the Ashford Loom has these little tables here you can set your shuttle on while you make sure your yarn's right. I leave about a tail like that and we will leave that in next. I'll show you that next. Take your reed and just tamp it down. Now you take your reed to the opposite position, lower. This is where I'm going to wrap in my end. You see how it raises it up? Now raised up this. I'm going to tuck it in to this shed and it gets wrapped around that yarn and tucked in. And after we do a couple of rows you will never even see that. So nice. All right so now the reeds to the bottom. I'm going to take the shuttle through again. Do not pull tight when it's going through. I talked earlier about if you pull tight, it's going to come in. I will show you a technique in just a little bit. And just tamp it down. Now bring it to the opposite position, which for me is up and we're off and running. Okay, here's the technique that Jane from the Yarn Shop Fiber Art Gallery taught me. When you bring it through, don't bring it through straight across and pull. Bring it through at an angle. Okay, bring it through at an angle. My cat Rocky's playing. And don't pull tight and just let it be like this. Then, see how loose this is and it's not yanking your yarn from either side? So when you bring it across and your yarn is here, make sure you have no extra here because you don't want any extra yarn sticking out of the side. There's no tension on the yarn whatsoever. It's not going to yank your end yarn in. Now, let the reed, as you gently tamp it down, put it into place. And there you go, you got no pulling. I wanted to have more room to work, so I advanced the project down towards the front roller. 
You do that by loosening up the paw, the paw up here, which loosens it, and moving your cog and rolling it all down. This reed has to be in the neutral position when you do that. So I rolled, advanced it all down, and in the meantime, I added my paper. That will roll with the project and lay between this as it becomes a woven fabric. And it just helps to keep it nice. It helps keep the yarns from, you know, how they attach to each other. It helps keep that from happening by having this paper there. Okay, another useful tool to have is a cheap little hair pick. Here's how it's useful. After I use the reed to tamp the yarn down, if I see anything popping up I don't like, I can use this hair pick to position the yarn where I want it to be. Pretty handy. All right, we're to the point where I want to wrap this around the bar. The reed needs to go to the neutral position. All right, I'm gonna unhook the pawl from the cog so it will roll. And then I'm gonna move this cog so I can wrap. The paper is here. I'm holding this because I don't want it to come loose. There's a lot of pressure between the two. And it's rolling on nicely. And we're gonna stop about right there where it's a decent place to start working again. I'm gonna add the tension back. And we're ready to go again. As you can see, we are nearly finished with the weaving. There's hardly any yarn left. We had planned that eight extra inches on either end for tying, and I hardly have any room left to work here. These are my last passes through. All right, I like to see how much I can get. So I'm gonna try to do one more. I'm gonna tamp this down. Work it with my pick. You can see here I have room. When the reed is in the up position, I have less trouble getting this through. The yarns are better separated. Okay, I'm gonna take it back to the neutral position and make sure this last strand is in. Now, this is your option if you want to weave another couple of end strands of a different color or something just to hold this in place. I have never done that. I have not had a problem. I'm just very careful that I don't, once I release this and cut it, that I don't let this fall. We're gonna cut the end. I'm gonna leave enough to be woven in. Now I need to take it to the down position. Okay, I'm gonna work in the end that I just cut. You want to wrap it around so you see this gets caught just as though you were taking a full row across. We're gonna take this up just as long as it is and then go ahead and tamp it down. And once you tie off your ends, you will not see this. We are done with the weaving parts. It's time to cut your warp ends off. Make sure your reed is in the neutral position and make sure when you're cutting, you don't cut these plastic supports, just your yarn. <laughs> I like to use a really good pair of sewing scissors that cut fabric good. And we're just gonna start across. Release some tension so that it's not tight and going to spring. I'm gonna let it come through here and I'm gonna gently just lay it over itself just like that. I wanna be very careful that I don't let this last strand come loose. And now we're gonna unwind it. Okay, it's released from the back warp stick. Now I'm going to protect this, but I'm going to release it from the front by unrolling it. Now 
We're going to untie this. Okay, I'm going to leave these warp sticks in. Okay. It is now free from the loom. After it's off the loom, I like to lay it out on a table and I like to make sure that that bottom row of yarn is nicely tucked up next to the other row. And then I like to organize all the warp strands. And that's where this pick comes in handy again. And what I want to do is trim this so that they're all close to even. When you take your woven item off the loom, the most important thing is to get your last strand of yarn secure. There's a couple of ways of doing that. You can take these individually and knot them right at the base and let this dangle. Or you can use a yarn twister. You twist the ends I like to put a whole lot of twist in so that they will do this really cute twist on themselves. Okay. See all that twist in there? I make sure that top row of yarn is tucked in nice. Just tie this off. And what I did prior to this is I measured these strands of yarn across so that they're all the same and trim them. So you get the idea. They're supposed to be knotted nicely like this, and then they will get trimmed as well, so that it looks really nice on the ends. Okay, so let's take these two and get them secure. And you see how they, I take the yarn, one from the bottom, one from the top, and that way, when it twists, it locks in that last row of yarn. There we have it. So that is what I'm going to do all the way across because I think this is kind of a fun, funky wrap. I'm going to go ahead and twist all of these because I like that finished look. And that's all just personal preference. I got one side done. I used the French twister to twist up all the loose ends. And this side is finished. And you see how this last strand of yarn is very secure between each of the twisted yarns. We have our cardboard warp sticks on the other side that we need to take out. I want to lay this out nicely and carefully because I don't want this last row here to, to come out loose. You can just gently take them out. And now I'm going to use the fringe twister on this side to secure this side and finish off these ends. The woven item is complete. Now I'm just having it sit on the form for a couple of days to decide if I want to keep the fringe length where it's at. Anyway, I hope you learned a lot in this tutorial and thank you for watching.